Last time I did a review of DC Comics Presents number 27, where the villainous Mongol had captured Superman's friends Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, and Steve Lombard in order to coerce Superman into getting Mongol the crystal key that would allow him access to the treacherous war world. Superman thought he could handle it and even went toe-to-toe with a Martian manhunter, but at the end of it all, his friends were safe, but Mongol got the key. Superman vowed to get help and to destroy war world. What on earth happened? Well, let's take a look at DC Comics Presents number 28 today on Kevin's Commentary on Comics. War World featuring none other than Supergirl. And of course, if you need some super help to defeat an unbeatable weapon, planetary weapon thing, why not get someone else who has the exact same powers as you? So at the opening of this issue, we see the two flying through space, but you know what? Where is Martian Manhunter? I mean, you know you gotta go get this war world and you know it's pretty powerful. Why did the Manhunter not stay with Superman to help him out? He must have really been pissed off about Superman letting Mongol have that key. So much so that he decided, well, screw it. You figure this out. I'm going to go back and have some Oreos. Inside reference there, the Martian Manhunter loves Oreos. So one of the great things about this issue and really all of these issues are the displays of Superman and Supergirl's powers. So after Crisis, which was when I actually started reading DC on a regular basis, uh, Superman was kind of powered down quite a bit from what he was in the books that I'm reading here in this showcase thing, which is actually kind of fun for me to read now to see him having just about any superpower at his disposal. So when they get to where they believe War World to be, they discover that it's already gone, but they use their microscopic vision and detect a trail of nuclear residue that I guess the War World left behind, and Superman and Supergirl were able to track down the behemoth weapon. But instead of zooming in head first, they decide to use their telescopic vision to do a little recognizance. And they discover that the world is covered with graves and also missiles. Gigantic missiles. Mongol decides to give Superman a taste of what War World can do and fires one of these missiles at him. Superman decides that he needs to figure out just how badass these missiles are and lets one almost hit him. Not quite hit him, but almost hit him. He dove out of the way just before it impacted he did discover, however, that those missiles possibly could have killed him. So before Superman or Supergirl could catch their breath, Mongol just starts firing all kinds of missiles at him. So Superman and Supergirl manage to avoid the missiles as well, and it's then that Superman figures out how to defeat Mongol. Both he and Supergirl fly around War World, making Mongol fire everything he has at him. And they dodge the missiles and they blast the missiles with their heat vision, all the while telling each other, in space somehow, that the helmet that controls War World itself sucks the energy out of the person that's using it. And thus, Mongol suffers the same fate as the War Zoon and falls into a crumpled heap on the floor. The super duo thought they were done, but oh no, War World is now running on cruise control and continues to fire missiles and lasers at the super duo. So they come up with a plan. Supergirl uses her super speed as she never has before and punches a hole straight through the center of War World. And before War World can heal itself, which apparently it can do, Superman flies in and reprograms this alien mechanism that he has never seen before that very moment. So... In addition to heat vision, super strength, super speed, he also has super brain, which is used quite a bit in these early stories. I don't understand how a yellow sun can do that, but hey, this is early DC. We get what we get. So he reprograms War World to attack itself, and just before it blows up, Superman tries to find Mongol, but Mongol has disappeared, and he flies away, of course, just in time as War World explodes. But wait a minute. Where's Supergirl? Where is Supergirl indeed? To find out, you'll just have to wait for next week's installment. Or you could just go read DC Comics Presents number 29 on your own. But then you won't get to hear my commentary if you do that. Or you could do both. Well, you know what? Either way, just tune in. 
For now, however, I'm Kevin and that was my commentary. What did you think of Superman and Supergirl having just about any power they could want or need? Do you like them that way or more powered down as they appear to be today? Leave a comment below and hey, why not subscribe while you're at it? It'll be, dare I say it, super. Later.